Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conjunctions in Astrology. What happens when the moon is in conjunction to Mercury in your chart? A lot of people have this in their horoscope. It's very common, but a little more complex than you might imagine. So all the details, how it will affect your destiny, including sign and house, are on this video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. If the video is good for you, give it a thumbs up. Let's begin. First of all, though, do you actually have a conjunction of the Moon and Mercury in your chart? You may think you do, but you may not have. A conjunction in the ancient Vedic system is about planets being in the same sign together, because a sign equals a house. So, if two or more planets are in the same sign, no matter how far apart they are by degree, they are in conjunction. But if one planet is 29 degrees of one sign, let's say, and the other planet at zero of the next sign, that's not a conjunction, even though they are only one degree apart in space, because they are in different signs, therefore different houses, with a completely different lord. Another point to consider is the nakshastra. If planets are in a different nakshastra but in the same sign, are they still forming conjunction? Most definitely they are, because the nakshastra just gives them an internal experience. But they're still in the same sign, they're still sharing the experience of that house, and they are still in a conjunction. So when you have the Moon and Mercury together in the same sidereal sign, you definitely have a conjunction of these two grahas. As I say, it's a very common conjunction, but misunderstood. Yes, they are benefics, but though the Moon is friendly to all, Mercury has a deep, real aversion to the Moon. It's not easy for him. Let's look at the energies involved, and it should become obvious why that is. And who then is the moon? The moon is known as Chandra in the Vedic system, the most gentle of all of the Grahas. He certainly has no enemies. He rules fourth house, mother, land, home, country and society itself. The moon is about the health of our body and indeed longevity. He rules DNA program by which we burn our karmas in this lifetime. He has everything to do with inclusivity, belonging, safety and indeed happiness. The moon is a sustainer of our body, as I say, of our health, vitality, and also he is the food which we eat. He has so much to do with our emotional nature and indeed our very personality. Don't forget, personality changes over the lifespan, waning, waxing like the moon. We think we are the same person, but when we look back over many decades, we see how much we have changed. At the deepest, most fundamental level, the moon in the Vedic system, we understand, is Manas. He is the mind. And just like the mind, he is hard to control. Don't forget, the mind in the Bhagavad Gita, we learn, is more difficult to control than the wind. Who then is Mercury? Mercury is known as Buddha in the Vedic system. He is the son of Tara, but she was the wife of Jupiter at the time, and his father was actually the moon. Coming about outside of marriage in this way, Mercury had to use all of his beauty and skill and his wit to get in the good books of his stepfather, Jupiter. He succeeded in this most mightily because Jupiter gave to him enormous knowledge and skill and actually gave him rulership over the earth element Prithvi Tattva. Mercury is not an earth Tattva planet but an earth planet. We should know this because he rules money. What more can connect you to the earth plane than money itself? In addition, he generally rules nature itself, including animals, trees, plants, etc. He is a kind and caring personality, a bit childlike, definitely, definitely influenced by any other planet he is with. Just like a child, he will take on the nature of his association. Mercury is swift and fast, and he is a learner of the zodiac, the eternal student. He represents communication, skill set, and travel itself. Commerce, business, all of these things, wherever you are piling up money through your skill, through your ingenuity, through your sales skill, whatever it is, Mercury is a planet you need to have strong in your chart. Strong Mercury gives you study skills, communication skills, writing skills, and most of all, great skills of speech and persuasion represents the friends in our life and also our sister. So Mercury in the same sidereal sign as the moon in this conjunction, why is it so uncomfortable? It's uncomfortable for Mercury. He is the actual son of the moon, but he was illegitimate and not brought up by the moon, brought up by Jupiter. 
basically he feels abandoned by the moon. So when he has to spend time with him, same space, same sign, he feels ill at ease, restless. Yes, they are both benefic grahas and the moon is friendly to all the other planets for sure. But Mercury is feeling agitated when the moon is so near. And this general agitation becomes a part of your personality. So first thing we see when the moon, Chandra, which is the mind, of course, is in conjunction to Mercury, there is a restlessness to the mind, to you, actually. You're a very restless, sometimes easily agitated person, but that depends on the sign. But definitely restlessness is there and certainly mental tension is often present. The more soothing is the sign placement, which I will talk about later, the, the less agitation there is there. But there is a very quick thinking mind, certainly. And this restlessness, mental tension can be seen in the opposition as well. Moon opposed Mercury acts very much the same. On a basic level, of course, moon is not just the mind, but the mother. So very often, Mercury with the moon, there is some changeable factor in the early nurturing experience. Sometimes it's not very warm, very close, but it's a, a very friendly intellectual companionship with the mother, which is more noticeable later in life. But on the positive side, well placed by sign, not too afflicted by malefics. Mercury is rational mind, moon is intuition. When they come together, wow, what insights you can have with this conjunction. And the insights will be of two sorts, emotional and intellectual. First of all, you have a high emotional intelligence with this moon-mercury conjunction. You read other people's feelings very well, even sometimes read their minds. But the other insights will be purely intellectual. The moon is the mind. Mercury is the books. Your mind is learning, constantly needs to learn, wants to know, is intellectually stimulated constantly. So fantastic for students, learners at any stage of life, actually. Moon Mercury makes you eternally curious right the way through your lifespan always learning something new, even to a very old age, this can be seen. But the moon mercury, though, is such a restless factor that you that you may be picking up subjects, dropping them, picking them up and going off onto a new tangent. That's not a bad thing, but consistency in some charts will not be there. Now, here's the other thing. Moon mercury has one definite minus. When you have to make a decision, rational decision, rational mind is Mercury. The moon is changing it all the time. Not that you have a problem making a decision. You can be super quick, snap decision. Yes, I'm definitely doing that. It seems firm and everybody believes in your decision. And then a few days later, maybe even a few hours later, all depends on the chart, you'll switch. You'll see some new aspect and you will want to do things differently. So sticking with decisions becomes difficult when the moon is with Mercury. On a personal level, that's not a problem. If you are self-employed, it's absolutely fine. It isn't going to affect anybody else. And it's a very creative aspect, actually, Moon Mercury. Writers, teachers, lecturers, public relations, people, novelists, definitely. Psychotherapists even sometimes have this Moon Mercury. And Mercury is a business planet. So being self-employed, doing own business, working from home sometimes, Moon is the home, can become very successful. It can be a real wealth building factor, Moon Mercury. However, when you are managing other people, working in a team even, this changeable factor can become difficult for other people. They don't know where they stand with you. They can be left spinning and this can cause you some problems definitely. Now the moon is home, Mercury is work. I've just said you can very often work from home with this moon-Mercury combination. But moon-Mercury are unsteady factors domestically. Mercury is actually Mananakataka Stana in the fourth house. I've just posted a video about that. Check it out. So some of that factor comes into this moon-Mercury combination. There can be dissatisfaction, restlessness domestically. 
there's a definite restlessness in the domestic sphere, always changing it, improving it, moving somewhere else, even not being in the home very much. There's a real difficulty just sitting there and being there quietly sometimes. However, well aspected, you can get profit from landed interest, property dealings, these areas. The moon being with Mercury makes you need society, need other people, like to be socially stimulated constantly, always on that mobile phone connecting to people. Well, I suppose many people are, but you especially so. You need connectivity. That's the thing. Of course, you will be witty, popular, fun-loving, humorous person very often with this moon Mercury. So you are very much liked in society. But here's the thing. The moon needs a little bit of peace and quiet. Moon is the mind. Mind can be overstimulated sometimes by this moon Mercury in your chart. And this can even cause occasionally mental health disturbance. Very common to see obsessive compulsive tendencies because moon is the mind and it is obsessing sometimes with Mercury here. Obsessing over all the fine details of life. So because mind is not at ease with this moon Mercury, having conflict, having mental pressure, there can be bodily problems, bodily disorders such as indigestion, speech disorders even, or skin, definitely skin problems because Mercury rules the skin. The best advice for anybody with this moon Mercury, you need to take time to yourself. If you can get away from that mobile phone, get away from the constant social stimulation, Always studying, always learning, definitely just take a little bit of time off. Relax, contemplate, complete relaxation. Meditation can be hard, but some form of relaxation and you can rejuvenate yourself ready for the next step. Let's look at the sign placements, everybody. So the Moon, Mercury and a fire sign. That means Moon, Mercury, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. What a volatility there's going to be here. The Moon becomes in a Gandanta situation in fire signs. All of that water and fire mixing. Emotions become excitable, volatile. You're always sometimes blowing your top, literally. You get excitable very easily. But what creative ideas, what ingenuity you can have moon and mercury in any of these fire signs but sometimes it's just too excitable sometimes there's just too much change going on you need to stabilize particularly aries sagittarius traveling a lot sagittarius aries getting into arguments disputes occasionally leo that's not so bad because fixed sign stabilizes this moon mercury in a very good way Moon Mercury in the Earth signs Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn is good. Of course, Moon is in own sign Taurus and in exaltation. Moon Mercury Taurus is excellent business person, trader, local business, food even especially. Moon Mercury Virgo, excellent. Mercury is in old sign, exalted, but there is a problem because the moon is self-critical. But excellent people skills, technical skills, maybe medical skill. And just like Virgo, Moon Mercury Capricorn, a bit obsessed with all of those fine details, a bit hard on yourself, self-critical. Main thing is you have technical skill as well and a tremendous ability for mental slogging it out. Students make the best of it. Moon, Mercury, air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, what sociability. You're constantly socializing, constantly meeting new people, making new friends. It's a lifetime project for you. Media people, writers, bloggers, salespeople even, tradespeople sometimes gain enormous charisma and and actual power of persuasion from this moon Mercury in all of the earth signs. In all of the water signs, huge sensitivity and intellectual ability to analyze others, sometimes psychotherapists, psychologists, etc. In all of these water signs benefit from this. But there is a deep emotional intelligence too. So you're very, very good at, at actually bringing people together, at soothing over problems. But when it becomes afflicted by malefics, you get yourself embroiled in some very emotional conflicts, sometimes with your friends as well.
The moon strong in own sign cancer makes this a big definite. You're extremely sensitive, but get yourself into some embroiled family or situations with your mother. Sometimes, de depending on the aspects on the house, certainly a possibility. Moon in Scorpio, watch for that emotional manipulation. Suspicious nature can come up. Moon has become debilitated. Mercury, highly suspicious when it gets into Scorpio. And don't forget Pisces. This is where you get the deeper spiritual wisdom. Moon is getting you to understand higher spiritual truths. And Mercury wants to study them nonstop. 24-7, that's a helpful factor. In the Kendra houses, 1st, 4th, 7th or 10th, either of them, any one, you will definitely be a sociable person interacting constantly with new people. Definitely profit to be had financially. Definitely a very busy life, very restless life. The first house, a total social magnet, bringing people together, very, very charismatic, very talented socially, talented in your communication, talented making money, extremely versatile. Mercury in the fourth house is in Maranakara Kastana, giving you restlessness, ill at ease in your domestic situation, but the moon is strong, so drawing you back continually. Strong connection to your family, country of origin, definitely always being drawn back, as I say, no matter how far away you go. Profit from businesses connecting to the home, landed interest, etc. Working from home, very often seen. Moon Mercury 7th house, often a very caring, friendly and compassionate person. You really gather people around you, a very attractive person to other people socially and even romantically. But the thing is, your mind is never steady in your relationships. Because you're always changing mind, changing mood in regard to relationships, you can find it hard to commit, depending on the sign. On the other hand, sometimes Moon Mercury shows a very early commitment, early marriage. What you have to do is have a deep intellectual compatibility with your spouse, with your partner. This will iron out many of the ups and downs of this position. Mercury and the moon in the 10th house, it needs to be stabilized to bring out the best factors. A great communicator, socializer within your career, working life, bringing people together, public relations, supporting colleagues, all of these things. Very helpful person in the office, if you like. But do you want to work in the office? Do you want to work from home? What do you even want to do? You can't seem to make your mind up if there is affliction to this moon Mercury in the 10th house. However, it's a very versatile thing. Even if there is many changes career-wise, there is always new opportunity coming up if there is good aspect. Second house, Moon and Mercury give you financial skills, business skills, business acumen, particularly local business. Fantastic if it is well-placed by sign, well-aspected. Henry makes you very involved with your family affairs, helpful to all of your family members. If there is contention by Mars, Saturn, Rahu, though there can be quarrels, financial distress within the family circle. Generally, though, Moon Mercury second house makes you exceptionally good at communicating. Your speech is very charming. In the 3611, Moon Mercury draws you towards other people, but sometimes in an argumentative and destructive way because Mars has Karaka of the third and the sixth house. So there can be emotional disturbances with your friendships or when you have Moon Mercury in the 3611. Sometimes you can have emotional distress. Sometimes you can also have obsessive compulsive disorder in this third, six, eleven house, particularly three and six. Because you are always obsessing about details of life, mind is never still. Well placed by sign, third house, writer, blogger, media person, communicator, excellent ability to communicate on a mass scale. Sixth house, healing energies are definitely because moon is a healing factor. Sixth house, mercury, medical talent, perhaps working with animals. Sometimes mercury represents that. Eleventh house, profit from continually changing objectives in life. Moon always gives you some new objective in this eleventh house. Very, very ingenious finding new ways to make money. In both the 5th and the ninth house, the moon Mercury makes you love to learn. You're eternally curious, always doing some new learning experience. Excellent for all students. 
Of course, whether it's affliction, ill placed by sign, you're always learning, but you don't stick with the course. You always get distracted. Very close bond with your children when you have Moon Mercury fifth house, especially maybe a daughter. Ninth house as well as fifth house, fantastic for teachers. You can have language skills, actually, 5th, ninth house, but particularly ninth house. Love to travel foreign lands, love foreign philosophy, intellectually curious about everything far distant from your place of birth. Profit business-wise, foreign lands, definitely seen, though, if it is well-aspected, Moon, Mercury, ninth house. 8th and 12th house, it can be quite heavy sometimes, afflicted definitely because you're quite heavy on yourself, always worrying about things, a lot of mental pressure with the moon mercury either 8th house or 12th house. Mercury 8th house can give you difficulties, business partnerships, sometimes quarrels with your spouse, in-laws can happen if it is not well aspected, particularly around financial concerns. In the 8th house, Moon is in a weakened position called Mora Nakata Kastana. Check the video just up on my channel to learn more. And with Mercury, you become very, very flexible, dealing with enormous changes throughout the lifespan. But you gain enormous emotional strength from actually going through these challenging times. Extremely intuitive about other people, 8th house as well. Read other people just like a book. Hard for anybody to hide anything from you, Moon Mercury, 8th house. Fantastic psychotherapist, counsellor, crisis worker even. And both the 8th and the 12th house, do Stana houses give you interest in and fantastic talent with secret knowledge, occult study, particularly astrology, 8th house maybe, 12th house, much more spiritual factors. The 12th house, Moon Mercury takes your mind into the deep depths of connection to the Supreme. You have come here to connect and it's a major mission in your life. Just like 8th house, superb understanding in intuition about other people's feelings, emotions, read their minds again. But definitely you get insight through your dreams. 12th house is about dream life. And what an imagination. Moon, Mercury, 12th house, fantastic for novelists, writers, creative people of all sorts. And you're consistently traveling in life, moving around. You can never really sit still. You're always moving to the next destination. Moon, Mercury takes you into foreign lands, definitely 12th house, but it may not be permanent residence unless the rest of the chart confirms. Check all the rest of the conjunctions in astrology on your screen right now. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.